Hey, good Wednesday morning, everybody. BAM Weather Meteorologist Brett Waltz here, giving you a long-range forecast update, guys. I hope you all are doing well this morning. I'm going to spend Wednesday's upcoming talking about severe weather. And so uh, Wednesdays during the winter, we kind of focused on winter weather and the winter patterns ahead. As we go through spring, we'll focus more on severe weather. And then on Wednesdays, as we get more into the growing season, we'll focus more on agriculture and agricultural impacts. And so today's video really going to hone in on the severe weather threats as we work over the next couple of weeks continues to look active. Uh, and in fact, today, uh, Wednesday, March 5th, additional severe weather potential for the East Coast as we get throughout the day today. Here's a look at our storm system, a dynamic, a strong storm system, a very strong low pressure system moving through the Midwest. It's wrapping around blizzard conditions into Iowa, Minnesota, Wisconsin. In fact, highways across the southern third of Minnesota shut down since last night because of uh, the blizzard conditions that have set up in there. And so uh, treacherous travel up there across the upper Midwest. And then you can see how widespread this storm system is from parts of Canada all the way down to central Florida. We've got severe thunderstorm warnings right now in parts of the Carolinas and into Virginia. This threat will actually increase a little bit as it pushes further off to the east as we work into the afternoon and into the evening hours today. Taking a look at our day one severe weather outlook, we have an enhanced risk for severe weather uh, for the eastern Carolinas to eastern Virginia there, uh, parts of Maryland, Delaware, uh, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, Georgia, all at play for some severe weather as well. Uh, today's biggest threat uh, in addition to tornadoes will likely be wind. Wind will be the biggest threat here. Straight line wind damage but we certainly could see a couple of tornadoes in here as well, especially in this red shaded area. Here's the daily tornado threat that you can see. This brown area is a 5% probability of a tornado within 25 miles of any particular location. So from Charleston, South Carolina to Greenville, North Carolina, Virginia Beach, all these areas need to be monitoring the weather forecast and the radar as we go throughout the rest of the day today. Here's a look at yesterday's severe weather reports and admittedly the tornado threat did not pan out uh, as we thought that it could. The storm system occluded a little bit faster and so the cold front uh, caught up with the warm front uh, which kind of limited some of the uh, wind shear dynamics a little bit with this storm system but still produced a whole lot of damaging wind reports. 186 damaging wind reports from Texas through the Gulf Coast, uh, Mississippi, Louisiana, Alabama, even into parts of Georgia, and will likely uh, increase that number a good bit today as well as this line continues to push further off to the east. And, you know, guys, this is just the, the first taste, I, I would say, of what will be a very active spring pattern. Uh, because as we work over the next couple of weeks, our tropical forcing is going to move into the Indian Ocean. For those of you not familiar, this is what we call the MJO, or Mad Julian Oscillation. It's just basically representing where thunderstorm activity is along the equator. That thunderstorm activity drives our jet streams. It helps influence our patterns and historically MJO phases two and three are the ones that correlate most to active severe weather in the United States and we're not even quite there yet we're just getting to MJO phase two today so I would expect things to ramp up even further as we get into the middle part of March we can see here this is basically the anomaly uh, for severe weather based off of the phases of the MJO again we're going into phases two and three and you can see how activity really spikes up with these phases in here. And so uh, as we work again towards the midway point of the month, we need to be on the lookout for the threats to continue to increase. The next chance looks to be uh, along the Gulf Coast as we work into Saturday. Wouldn't say this is near to the extent of what uh, the threat was yesterday, or certainly not near to the extent of the storm system, but there could be some severe weather to monitor as we work into Saturday and Sunday morning. And then looking out into the middle part of next week, next Wednesday, there's a quick moving little storm system, maybe something to monitor in here day eight, but I have my eyes on a bigger storm system that we're going to need to monitor late next week and into next weekend. If we take a look at the upper level pattern here, guys, uh, we just continue to see these ups and downs and these systems move through. Here's the storm system into the weekend, guys. Then we warm things up well above normal again. Here's another little storm system that moves through. That's the one next Wednesday into Thursday. This is the big one that I want to watch. This setup is very, very similar to what we dealt with yesterday. Obviously, 
dynamics and, and specifics to be sorted out. It's nine, ten days out. But to me, the setup is certainly favorable for another severe weather opportunity and maybe a bigger severe weather threat uh, next Friday, Saturday, somewhere in that time frame there. And so this is the next one that I think could be bigger that we need to keep an eye out for. Uh, again, don't get attached to any kind of specifics at this distance. Model data will be all over the place with the storm track, but the pattern setup is there. The pattern drivers are there for a big storm system, a strong low pressure system, and additional severe weather threats heading into late next week. As this sweeps through, guys, we'll cool things down again for a brief time, but then look at what happens. Another storm system will come right back into the picture as we continue this very active pattern. We've got four or five storm systems just over the next two weeks that we need to monitor. Here's the big one. Uh, here's kind of the setup that we'd be looking at, calling it round two because the setup reminds me so much of yesterday's uh, next Friday into next Sunday. Again, uh, don't get attached to any kind of specifics, but generally you're looking at colder air being pulled down from the north. Could be additional snow threats in parts of the northern plains in the Midwest. That's not off the table. Warm, moist air gets pulled into the eastern half of the country, providing rain and severe weather threats. One that is worth monitoring carefully over the next several days. In terms of what this type of, uh, of an active pattern leads to in terms of temperatures, you're going to have fluctuations. You're going to have big ups and downs, big swings. But it tends to favor colder air winning out west and warmer air winning out east. And I think that this is actually the AIFS model. The, the AI European model actually is showing this pretty well here. Uh, it's not substantially above normal. You could have a couple of days in there that are well above normal. Don't get me wrong. But averaging out 3 to 5 degrees, 3 to 6 degrees above normal in the east, uh, 5 to 10 degrees colder for the west coast. All things considered overall matching pretty well with our thoughts as we get into the middle part of March. Breaking this down just in terms of who will be above and below normal with severe weather, uh, this is the area that we've highlighted for above normal severe weather threats between March 14th and March 23rd. I would not be shocked if one of these storm systems could track a little bit further north and uh, we could bring into play Areas like uh, Iowa, Illinois, Indiana, kind of in this area in here. Though, you know, if there's a much above normal, I wouldn't be shocked if we needed to add it in here. This is kind of, I would say, the biggest target area right now. But uh, given the setup, all of these areas at play for an elevated risk compared to normal of severe weather in this day 10 to 20 day hazard map. We will see a little bit of a lull in the more active pattern the next seven days. Again, there's that system down south that we'll need to monitor into the weekend, but not quite as active the next seven days that changes that changes guys as we get into this week two time frame this is a setup to me that again is going to favor rain and storm activity kind of through this area in here and it's going to favor additional wintry weather chances up here across the northern plains and the upper midwest i think the concern down south if you're looking for moisture down in the southern plains is you kind of get split here by the two flows of moisture and so that is something to keep in mind as well looking out ahead this is the cfs severe weather dashboard guys uh, again i'm not ever taking any of this verbatim but i look for trends i look for consistent signals and there are a couple of consistent signals that i see here we're looking for the bright colors that pop up i see one here that's around the uh, 13th 14th late next week i see another one here as we get into early April, and this has been remarkably consistent for how far out that it is. And in general, I have seen a consistent signal for high severe weather signals. And so, you know, I, I think that the theme as we go through the rest of March and into April is just that there will continue to be an active severe weather pattern. The data is seeing it, the analogs and the pattern drivers support it, and it matches our severe weather season outlook. Now, this is what we put out last week or even maybe even two weeks ago now at this point. I don't have any change to this type of idea. Uh, I see a lot of similarities to this setup as we work over the next couple of weeks and especially into the month of April as well. And so it's going to be busy. Uh, I think that's the, the word of the day is busy. Busy in terms of severe weather south and east. Busy in terms of maybe high wind events and snow north and west in the Midwest northern plains. I think March will be memorable in terms of how active that it's going to be. Uh, guys, thanks so much for watching. Hope you all have a great rest of your day.